Well, congratulations on your book. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so let's discuss Melania okay. and me, the rise and fall of my friendship with the first lady. Okay. So when did you decide you were going to write about your experience? Well, when I um, was, I, I guess the f- first thing to say is that my experience with, with Melania and the White House and the Presidential Inauguration Committee um, was fast and furious. And um, I am a meticulous record keeper. I've always been. It's just who I am. So my intent and, and having all of my, um, uh, all the administrative things that, that you would do normally under any circumstances as part of your job, which mine was very much about budgets and um, with my work that I've done, um, things just didn't seem to add up. Let's just put it that way. And so um, as after the presidential inauguration committee, um, producing the events, I then went into the White House with Melania because she had no one else. I mean, no one. So maybe I should back up. I, I like was so interested. I just like wanted to have, hear you answer that question so badly, but maybe I should provide more context, which is that you and Melania were friends. You met in part through your kids. You would go to lunches. You would hang out. And she considered you one of her inner circle, essentially, um, beforehand and would always give you – um, birthday gifts and call you and, you know, if she needed favors and, you know, recommendations, you were her go-to. And so that's like the context. The orchid was yearly. That was the birthday gift, the orchid. Yeah, the orchid. Now, Sorry, not I flowers. Used, no, orchid. No, 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 no. I think it's really important because for me at the time, every year I would get that and I would think to myself, oh my God, she remembered, you know, your friends remember these things. She wasn't the one ordering. I mean, it, it was a, it was a yearly, and those were the things that I had to pick up on and take a step back and go, that's not a, per- that, that wasn't, yes, it was a, a lovely gesture and it was wonderful to be acknowledged and have your friend, right? You just, all you want you to do is your friends to reach out with, in a text and say happy birthday. But at the time when someone's just going on, you think, wow, that was, that was really nice. Like she, they, they, it, I considered it more care than what I think maybe really what it was. And you don't think that it was from a place of care at all? I, I, no, 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 not at all. No, no, I didn't, I definitely think it was a place of care, but that's just who she is. She's very, um, it's part of, of her, um, her makeup is to make sure that things are recognized on behalf of others. A thank you note, a, you know, she's very cordial. She, she does things very, um, formally. And that's more how I was thinking of it versus my scattered brain where I'm all over the place and I'm, you know, last minute writing my friends and calling them and, um, life, you know, right. between work and kids. It's Wait, just, just teasing this out. So do you mean like the fact, do you think that she had it like in her calendar and that it's less care? Not that it's less care, but it is in her calendar. Okay. And Melania does have, you know, assistants and people that take care of those things. Right. And that's not to say, again, she had to want to do it. And right. she, but again, it's that next step where it's not only do you see it on your iCal, but you take the time to make sure that it gets there and you ask and you talk about it. It was just, it was a, it was a, it was a very kind gesture. So you think it was a kind gesture, but it seemed kinder than it actually was because of how it was like, I don't want to keep dwelling on this, but um, oh. anyway, let me just let it go. So anyway, so she, that, that ended up happening. Um, and then um, as you had sort of gotten closer and you recorded a, a bunch of your emails and all this stuff. I didn't record. You were rec- record. Oh. I'm sorry. That was the wrong word. Well, you were just saying you're a great record keeper. So I think that's why it was in my head that you keep no, meticulous all. records and everything. And then you have so many of the emails you exchanged in the book. So like everybody, they save, right? So absolutely. And, and that's the thing too, is I think the most, one of the most important things for me in writing this book was to clear my conscience because it was immediately after I was um, fed to the wolves, thrown under the bus and accused of, you know, a financial uh, crime and, and headlined all over the world as this, you know, Melania's friend gets $26 million. And then the following week, Melania's friend gets fired. Um, you know, they made it, they attached it, they made it culpable. And neither headline was true, but she wouldn't, you know, she, and again, there's part, that's why I felt like I had to make sense of, I had to take a big step back. And I started writing because I was writing an op-ed. I was trying to put this into an op-ed thinking, okay, if I write what happened, I can tell, you know, in, in, in 800 words, I'm trying to, 12, you know, to fit this in so everyone can understand 
And that op-ed just kept going and going and going and going because and, I couldn't get enough out and I couldn't get enough out. your op-ed is long. Basically That's my happened. op-ed. Okay. And yeah. it's based on all facts. I mean, there's not a line that's disputable. And so when the White House kept coming after me, saying I was delusional, I made things up, I, those are the reasons why you hear some of those recordings now. Because I kept, yeah. Wait, so for people who don't know what happened, you went into the White House. Just tell like the, so you went into the White House, you were hired to help with the inauguration. You had a whole history at running the Met Ball for many, many years and were like complete superstar event producer and a thousand trillion other amazing reputable things in society, blah, blah, blah. So you go, Melania says she wants you to be part of the inauguration. You orchestrate that in your way that you are used to doing. Then what happens? So I was working with a lot of people during the inauguration and there were a lot of things going on around me that I, again, I wasn't accustomed to, but I also wasn't familiar with. So I would constantly bring up to Donald Melania a lot of inconsistencies and inaccuracies of things that didn't happen and also didn't make sense. Um, and so after the inauguration, um, we planned 18 events. I was only supposed to go in to do creative, ended up doing it at a couple events, right? Ended up being the um, central figure. I, I became the face of the inauguration for some odd reason. Um, and I do know there was a meeting a couple of days, you know, a week before that, Stephanie, you need to go out front. You need to, we're going to, you know, do the New York Times article and we need you out there to show, show, everyone that you're in support of this because I hadn't done any press and I had no intention of doing press. I was just doing it actually out of honor because it is the United States of America. I am a producer. I felt it's an amazing thing to be asked to do. Um, and Milani is my friend. And so nobody else would do it. And the reality is I, even if other people would have done it, I, it's on my own fault, didn't understand. I didn't take policy into consideration at the time at all. Neither was I that familiar with it. I've had to educate myself because quite honestly, I thought I could separate politics and ethics. And I, you know, the way I was able to live my life was to do humanitarian, work on humanitarian, contribute in producing events like the inauguration. But I didn't, I, I always blocked out the noise of politics. That is not, you, you cannot live your life like that. I, I, I am, that is my fault for going into this and saying yes to something that I knew nothing about. Um, this, is, this was no fairy tale. This was no, you know, New York Fashion Week. This was, this was a different world, a different beast, and I didn't know enough. And that's one of the biggest lessons I learned. No matter how close you are to someone, you are not, you know, you've got to ask questions and you've got to make sure you understand who the players are before you agree to um, jump into, you know, a, any, anything that you do in your life. Um, and so I wanted to believe that good over evil thoughts, you know, doesn't matter. Does, it, it does not work that way in politics or in this world uh, that I was dealing with with these people. But I always felt Melania had my back and Donald. So it was really with the support of Melania when I came back to New York, literally two days later, I flew to D.C. She had no one else. I mean, no one. I was interviewing everyone for her office during the inauguration. So as I was planning the inauguration and I was working on all of, you know, Ralph Lauren and getting all of her organizing her for, for the swearing in um, every step of the way working with um, you know, on production and broadcast, I was interviewing and hired um, and met and hired a few people for the East wing. When I went back to uh, the white house, um, it was empty. It was just, I mean, it was an empty dark place and I was alone and I turned on the lights. I remember calling her and being like, and there I was standing in Michelle Obama's office. And to me, I was like, Oh my God, I'm standing in Michelle Obama's office. And she was, you know, like no big deal. Like it was like, no, like I'm FaceTiming her. I just remember that moment. And I'm like, my God, look where I am. I'm in now, I said, I'm in your office. I'm like, this is the White House. This is the United States of America. And it was sort of like, you know, she just moved on to, you know, laughed and like moved on to what's next, which is the redecorating and the staffing. And, but she didn't really want to even talk about that. So it was more... Again, I think I held the regard and, and um, I think I was obviously projecting what I felt onto her. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's another thing that I see, you know, in retrospect, um, that I think because I was in a position to help her, but I was also in a position in the proximity to her, the power that she wielded. 
the platform that she had to, you know, at her fingertips um, was obviously it was something that, you, you know, I, you know, people say, oh, you wanted the power. No, no. I, I, there's so much about children and, and social emotional learning that's very personal to me because of my children um, and the importance of not, you know, um, identifying children based on how they look. Are they typical? Are they not? Um, our family's been through a lot. And so the journeys that we've had to take to understand how important it is for children to be able to first understand themselves and be able to express themselves, they need the tools to know how to do that. And that's all about prevention, right? It's not about intervention. So when you go into kindergarten, you need to learn that I don't feel well. You need to, what does that mean? You know, so express your feelings, understand what that means, regulate yourself. So these are things that my husband and I, and my, as my kids, um, learned over 10 years. And so I felt that every child should have this because it's not just for children with learning disabilities and differences. It's for every child. And the fact that she only wanted to focus on cyberbullying, she was open to a bigger umbrella. And so for me, it was, I was working with the L Center of Emotional Intelligence, um, Aspen Institute, uh, Tim Shriver. I mean, we had an amazing team of people that um, truly, I think, you know, Ivanka wanted to usurp the first lady. The West Wing did not want her to continue moving on on a platform, honestly. Um, and uh, I mean, it's, there's, so me there's so much going on at once, so I apologize. No, it's okay. But um, I, I just, um, I, I, I mean, I was. I was banging my head against the wall every day about her and about the position I put myself in and also the position that I, you know, looking forward and tunnel vision to get it done. And, um, so and basically the you, you took an assignment and then didn't totally process because who could know what would come with it. No and then you found yourself in this new environment and then you didn't have your one ally. You feel enough. And it's like, well, um, I had her until I had her. I did. I had her until they needed to place blame um, they heard there was an investigation opening up into the presidential inauguration committee. And as soon as that happened, she turned her back on me when I needed her most. And all I needed her to do was speak the truth and just say, and she had says it to me personally. And that's why, um, you know, people say, Oh, you can't believe you recorded a friend. And, no, no. They had already, they had already accused me of, of, of um, getting $26 million. They accused me of being fired and all the other accusations that came with it, I was already had hired a lawyer when I was in the White House still in January. Um, and she knew about it because there was this setup to taking me down. And I was aware of it. I and wasn't why, aware of why it. Did they, why did they want to take you down? Um, well, they needed, they needed to, as, as, as again in the book, but it, it's, it was the importance of mitigating the negative um, uh, um, the negative response to any type of uh, headline for the first lady in reference to me working for her because of, because of the accusations of the pick. Now, I'm the one who raised all the red flags. I, you know, people say, oh, I didn't have any signing powers. I didn't have budget powers. I had the ability, I was like, like I said, it was a piece of chewing gum between everyone and I was being pulled and pushed in every direction, but I never even had access to a bank account. I never had a checkbook. I was kicked out of financial meetings. So, I can run over to their apartment at Trump Tower and show them things and say, oh my God, I'm going to end up in the bottom of the Potomac because I'm pointing this out to you. And they would pick up the phone and do some you know, fire over gates and this, the things that went on around me. But at the end of the day, I had no financial responsibility, which made it even worse. So, um, so the fact that this worked, do you, do you know what I'm saying? Yes. So internally, um, there were these 62 questions that went around the White House for a year. Inauguration's over, okay? In January, February 2000, uh, okay, January 2017. In February 2018, they released the 990. It's a Form 990 that's going to the Federal Election Committee. When they did that, it's, they list the top five companies. You don't list individuals, ever. But as Wiz was created for full transparency, it's literally four people from Tiny Horse and myself. Again, we were only supposed to be overseeing $1.62 million dollars. Um, how it got to where it got to is a whole nother story. And that's, I'm working with the United States Attorney General for the District of Columbia. Um, 
I, and I know I'm going all over the place and I apologize, but I'm involved in three different you know, investigations. I mean, I was subpoenaed by the grand jury of the Southern District of New York, um, the Intelligence Committee, as well as working with um, DC Now. And, you know, it's been, it took over my life. And so I pressed record after I was in the White House, after I had already hired a lawyer because they wanted me to create a narrative, not go along, I wouldn't go along with theirs, which was, this was the most peaceful transitional of power and everything was done by the book and, you know, I, I wouldn't do it. And this is when I'm sitting in the first lady's office creating her initiatives. So I was a problem. I was a problem for everyone. And I actually expressed that to the lawyers. I was very vocal about the fact that of what, was, what had happened during the inauguration. Um, and I wouldn't keep my mouth shut. And so um, not only did they not want the initiative to move forward, they, didn't, they needed me to, to stop talking about the, 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 Mr., you know, the yeah. improprieties. So I get everything. And I, you know, I did read your book and I followed you on the news. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I no. Know. I just want you to know, I do have some right. background. And part of this is like teasing out what happened. Because what I'm really curious about, and I am sorry for what's happened to you. And I can sense your your fear, really. I mean, there's a lot going on. It's a lot of, is like out of your control. And all you've done is work hard. And yet all this stuff is happening to you. And I can tell how unfair you feel that is. And justifiably it took over my life yeah so I, socially yeah. emotionally physically it was in the hospital for over a month i mean i almost died and i i did and i gave up all my businesses i mean i literally gave up all my partnerships to go do this for her so that's why that betrayal was so hard and it still affects me um because it wasn't like your friend just turned the, you know didn't call you back i mean i gave up 25 years of my life's work my career my livelihood, my ch- three children had to watch this. And you do you know, think she had the, the free will almost enough to do like, do you like my, from just how it looks on the outside? Well, I shouldn't say that. Do you think that she was an independent actor enough to have, if she wanted to have had your back, do you think she could have? Well, that's when I have the recordings, right? So that's where she couldn't have. And she told me the lawyers have spoken. These right. are her words. So so it's lawyers- almost like, is it really her fault? Yes. I mean, like, not, and not to say that there's not a huge oh. amount of wrongdoing here, but it seems like with the book, at least, the point of view of the book is sort of like, you know, the friend who does you wrong, which I'm not saying she didn't. Mm-hmm. I'm just wondering, like, is, is all the rage and the frustration and justifiable sentiment you feel, is it really... Is it really because of her or is it because of this whole situation? Well, it had not been for her, I wouldn't have put myself in that situation. Had it not been for her, um, the first story that said I got $26 million, which to begin with wasn't true, whatever. Like it, it was the second story where all she had to do was say I wasn't fired, right? That made me culpable to the money. It made it look as if I, if it, I was on a contract that was terminated due to uh, Jared and Rob Porter's security clearances, had nothing to do with the pick. So she asked me to keep it quiet about my contract because there was one other person who had the same contract. Mm -hmm. And had I actually said that and told the world that, then they could have made me culpable to the first article. So, and she, again, the persuasiveness to keep my mouth quiet, talk to a lawyer, but keep your mouth quiet. And I had the NDA, so I was gagged. I couldn't say a word. Um, when your friend tells you to get over it and don't be so dramatic after that happens to you, that's not a friend that, you know, there was no empathy. There was no understanding. This came to that because of politics and, you know, those were her words. And so, um, again, I didn't need for her to do anything with the presidential inauguration committee misdeeds, right? She wanted to say, I just needed her to say I wasn't fired because I wasn't. Do you, that, think, do you think she feels remorse? Do you think she feels anything? Like I, in the book, you paint her as somebody who is, ha, doesn't have that many emotions. Like, you know, sometimes we're like, well, how can she stand by her? Like, how can this not bother her, right? Like, that's the common thing. Like, she seems so like, you know, well, you describe it as calm, but it's also, can she feel the feelings? And do, do, is she capable of remorse? 
and what do you think? Like, because okay. that's sort of different. That's like a kid at school who like, you know, doesn't have the ability necessarily. And I'm not saying, you know, we're oh. all like very up to date, child mind, you know, yeah. different socio-emotional stuff. Like, is it that she lacks the ability or is it that it was intentional? So Milan, there, there are many different um, angles to Melania and there are de- many different Melanias. Um, what's consistent is that I, I say that she's unapolog- unapologetically skin deep. If she cannot control how you think about her, she will not even consider how you're feeling or what you're thinking. And that's a fact. So um, she must be able to control the narrative and the, and she says it over and over, I don't care, right? Politi- what, they, somebody hurts her, somebody does something mean or terrible to her, you know, they expose her nudies on the cover of a magazine, politics. They, you know, the RNC speech, politics, liberal media. She literally says about those type of things, it'll pass in a week. Mm-hmm. And we have a lot of conversations, she and I, where I said, I wish I could live my life somewhat like that because I can't. Right. I, 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 I'm, I wear my heart on my sleeve. She does and did express how she is able to move on and people need to just stand up, hold your head up high and move on and get on with it because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, the next week, the next month. I mean, these are her words. But she did say, you know, I love you and I'm sorry. Um, that's not enough. That's not Can enough. I have the letter in here where she's, she's apologetic-ish and, you know, say, you know, love Melania and all this stuff to the end. Um, like, did you ever think you were going to, like, did you, ever, did you ever think of yourself as, like, a person who would sort of write a book about a friendship gone wrong type of yeah. thing? Or, like, what type Never. of, like, or are you, like, what, is, you know, your other friendships and all the rest? Never. Like, that, like in my lifetime, I never, cons- like, I literally looked at my husband one night, I was like, I'm an author? Like, I never, ever, 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 this was me to be able to understand what happened to me and the world around me. Because I couldn't make sense of who is Melania then. How is it possible that she could be so callous, yet at the same time I was drawn to her because she had such great common advice, because she was so strong and independent. Um, but what that is, is it, there's, a, there's, she, there's a barrier that she doesn't, it's not that she, she feels it, but she's not going to let it, she's not going to internalize it ever. I totally get that you need to figure her out and process it. And you must have just like a trillion feelings about this whole thing. But that's like one bucket. Another bucket is like taking it and sharing it with the entire world. (laughs) No, and and the entire world needs to know she supports him. She's his biggest cheerleader. She thinks that he should, again, be very strong and, and, and assertive about everything that he's doing. She is not at all concerned about what you think nor does she want to tell you what's really going on in the incident with, you know, the meme, Free Melania. Baron accidentally, as you know, Baron accidentally kicked her in the foot. But by revealing, she will never reveal to anyone the source of what's happening because she doesn't want you to know her emotions and she doesn't want the reader to know who she is. She doesn't want anyone in the world to have any inkling. But the truth is, she does not care. She really doesn't. If it, it's good for Melania, it's good for Melania. And that's, forget about me. I'm talking about everyone else. From anyone else's you know, situation to the way I watched her deal with certain people that were very close and helped, you know, that really, friends, she will ask, oh, how's that person doing? Or but she do really you, doesn't Do know. you think that anyone doesn't believe that she supports her husband? Do you know what I mean? Like, like, well, I, when like- I still think that people... And that's one of the reasons why I did release the tape, in addition to the fact that they were calling me a paranoid liar, is that people need to hear it from her so they understand that Melania, um, if she, in order for her to do something, she needs to be recognized for doing it. That's where she and Donald are very similar, right? He'll, but he'll cry about it if, if, if someone's, you know, beating him up. He wants to get where she doesn't care, right? You can say anything you want about her. That's the difference between the two of them. They both want the attention. They both internalize it, but Melania, that's where it ends. Do you feel like you had any, based on your friendship before, do you feel like you had any loyalty to her to, to, to like not 
share her inner stuff? Oh, I still to this day feel like, honestly, the whole thing that happened with, with the recording yesterday, I, in my mind, never even went there. My, I didn't even to think that that's what it would turn into, a battle between Twitter. I was like, oh my, I honestly was sick to my stomach. Um, not my intent. None of, honestly, I wanted to write the book and move on. I really thought I'm going to write this. I'm going to make sure that, you know, I'm, the world knows what really happened. I'm involved in these investigations, so I was leaving some breadcrumbs as well. Um, because of my NDA, I am still gagged. So I worked with First Amendment lawyers to be able to write as much as I could. Um, there is a lot of bad going on in our administration. I mean, a lot. And the people that are leading it are um, connected in so many different ways that people have, don't even realize. So the intricacies of what's going on and how it's affecting us and how it will affect our children and our children's children. I didn't feel like, I felt like I'm, I'm still protecting them if I don't release the tape as well. I, I think it was like after the, the presidential debate, mm -hmm. the way he acted with, with to, to, to Joe Biden. And then when she went on stage and admiringly like looked at him and smiled, regardless of how they held each other, because that's a whole difference. They could, that's not what they do anyway. But in my, all of a sudden, I felt my blood boil. I felt like it just wasn't right. You, you, I mean, if I was my husband, I would have gone on stage, regardless on cameras or not. I would look and I was like, what the, what, what was that? Like, what, you know, I understand he's the president, respect, but you oh, don't God. treat people that way. Sorry, sorry. You, oh, no, no. But you don't, it, it, it's not okay. So right. um, the disrespect, uh, uh, you know, just the lack of, of character and integrity um, she stands behind that because that is who she is too. Um, it, it, there is no free Melania. There is no, oh, poor Melania. I don't want us to feel sorry for her at all. At all. Neither does she. Right. Okay. She doesn't want anyone to feel sorry for her. She knows exactly what she's doing. And she says, consequences or no consequences. I do what I do because I want to. She is, she doesn't feel it the way you, that everyone thinks she feels it. She just doesn't at all. And again, we're a month away from this debate, you know, this, this election and having spent the time these couple of years learning about politics and learning about the fact that you've got to educate yourself and you have to know the differences, not only between right and wrong, you know, because for me, it was never left versus right. It was always right versus wrong. Mm -hmm. But you have to know the differences because you're, as I said earlier, your, ethical, your ethics, your, your values are, are, have to be in, in, in line with your politics. And so I have a responsibility to myself, my children, my family. I mean, they watched me suffer and give up and do. And the, I mean, I had a responsibility to learn what I didn't know. And now I, I'm vocalizing it and verbalizing it so people understand that they need to know more. They is need this, to understand. Is this helping you? Because I feel like you're still really upset. <laughs> no, no, no. Can I tell you? No, no. I, well, there's something that happened. So it's, things got a little, I, again, I wanted to write the book and go like this. But the, the fact is, is that I have so much information that people are still using because of the investigations. Again, I'm a witness in all of them. The, the weight on me and not being able to talk about the things I know and the expectations from all of these uh, prosecutors and people Again, I spent millions of dollars. Why? For what? So I can give the government the information that I kept calling out and I mean over and over and over. And what's happening? Right? These people are still walking around power. So it's not even I'm for me the the emotion is not so much even just it's not Melania. And it's not the betrayal because I, I really got it. Like I understand the fact that again, it's inhumane. It is. And yet we have a humanitarian crisis in our backyard and that's all anyone should be talking about. It's all she should be doing. And yet she's, you know, what she did to the Rose Garden is just, I mean, every nothing, you know, I tie those things together and I say to myself, that's what makes me angry is that she's in a position to make a difference and she doesn't. But what's, what, what still upsets me is that I am a voice that knows her and knows this family in a very different way. I know Melania to her core. I've sat with that family at dinner tables. 
I've spent time. Now, do I know Donald and the, and the boys and Ivanka? Not anywhere near how I know Melania at all. I know Melania. And so I can say to everyone, do not worry about her and do not think that she has any remotely, any like sad feelings or she's locked up or, but I do have to vocalize and I have to, I keep saying, I mean, I must verbalize the fact that I can't say it enough. People really need to understand the politics of this all and how it's going to affect our next generation. Just, we're not going to be here to protect them. Wow. Well, this is intense. (laughs) <laughs> sorry. No, I mean like No, don't be sorry. I um I you have a lot going on. This is a lot to carry for anyone. Um and I think it sounds like, you know, you're you're using the book to sort out your feelings. You're trying hard not to succumb to the things that have happened. You're trying to look for why they happened and you're angry and frustrated and here's the thing. The truth is, is that what happened to me is happening to everyone else, right? right? Yes. And that, again, when you when writing the book and expressing those 69 days, and you know, I was able to tell it through my friendship with Melania mm-hmm. because of the NDA again. So through my friendship with Melania, I didn't have an NDA. I wasn't being paid for my work for Melania. So everything I did was, was I on my own dime. No, I get it. I get it. It was well, a journey. It's a journey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, like we're out of time already and I didn't even ask you about the writing oh, you, of the book and you want to go I mean no I can't I try to keep oh. I, like, I mean I'll take this little part out while we're talking about this but um uh let me just ask you one or two more questions and I'll I'm okay. so sorry that I went no, off no I just feel like there's so much to unpack in your experience and um I um I feel like I, I am I'm like watching someone who is really struggling and that is really hard. And maybe I'm not I'm oh, out of line saying oh, that. No. It just seems no, but like can I tell you, emotionally, again, I almost when I say I almost died, like I live I've had two my two pulmonary embolisms, I had two spinal fusions, I wear a neck brace around my house, like I can't do the things I used to do. I, I mean I, I am not the same oh, person. God. I have to get my daughter. <laughs> oh my god, go. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm like, oh, let's just ask a few more questions. Um, meanwhile, she's like, but you're not wrong. Let me just say that. But you're not wrong. Okay. Yeah. You're not well, wrong. I, um, so, I and it's okay that, to I hope it. that this book plays into your being able to find some sort of inner, inner, um, peace and sense and make sense of sort of what's happened and, um, and move on because ultimately you can't, save the world you have no. to save like focus maybe on you and 100 yeah. percent. that's why again writing the book and closing the door would have been perfect it right. didn't allow me to because of everything else that's going on wow that's well like i'm happy to continue this in another forum but uh okay. <laughs> thank you so much and again i'm so sorry that i over spoke about other things no it's um it's it's very interesting and um i'm it's you know it's very well, if you want to speak some more, even off, you know, I guess I'm happy. To, I, I'm, and I do apologize, but no, no thank you apologize. so much. Okay. Thanks um, for coming. Thanks, thanks for coming. Thanks. On the show. Okay. 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 okay.